In this session, we are going to be continuing our discussion on linear equations and their representation in the form of a matrix. We've already discussed how we can represent linear equations in the form of a matrix and after having done that, we can identify the number of solutions a linear equation has. So for instance, it can have infinitely many solutions, no solution or one solution, correct? Now what if I had to find the values of the variables of a linear equation when they were represented in the form of a matrix? Is that possible? Yes, it is. And that's what we are going to be discussing in this session. So the first thing we need to understand is what exactly a row equivalent form is, right? So <clears throat> a matrix is an equivalent form if the zero rows are at the bottom, if the pivot, which is the first non-zero entry in a row of the i plus one -th row, if it exists, comes to the right of the pivot of the i -th row, and the third one being if the entries below the pivot in a pivotal column are zero. So these are the three conditions for a matrix to be in equivalent form or row equivalent form. Why should I bring a matrix in row equivalent form? Because our original goal is to actually find the values or the solutions of linear equations. And by bringing the matrix in a row equivalent form, I'm actually finding the solutions for that equation. Let's see how that happens. But first, let's try to identify some matrices in row equivalent form. So here are some of the matrices. Let's have a look at them. The first matrix has the first row index value 0, 2, 4, 2, correct? So the first pivot, which is non-zero entry, is 2 in this case. So the next pivot entry, which is 1, which is right to the first pivot entry, all the elements below the pivot in a pivotal column are 0. And the third condition being that all the zeros need to be at the bottom. So all the three conditions are satisfied and hence this matrix is in row equivalent form. Just a heads up here, the third condition that all the rows, um, sorry, all the, a row which has all of its entries as zero has to be at the bottom is not a mandatory condition. So it can be there in a matrix and it might not be there, but the other two conditions are mandatory for a matrix to be in a row equivalent form. Let's take the second example. So here the pivot entry is 1, the next pivot entry is 3, and then the next pivot entry is 1. So they're all on the right. This condition is satisfied. All the entries below pivot in a pivotal column has to be 0. So we have a 0 here and we have a 0 here. So even this matrix is in a row equivalent form. How about this one? 1, 2, 1. All the pivot e elements are on the right-hand side. The entries below the pivot in a pivotal columns are 0 here. It's a 0 here and it's even a 0 here, correct? So this is also a matrix in a row equivalent form. And let's check the last one. The pivots are all on the right hand side. The values are zero here and the value of an element in the pivotal column is zero even here. So even this matrix is in a row equivalent form. Just on an intuition purpose, I want us to think that if we have to bring a matrix in row equivalent form, we're trying to bring the matrix in upper triangular state, all right? So there'll be non-zero entries on the upper right hand side of the diagonal and diagonal and there will be zero entries like on the lower left hand side of the matrix okay but just keep in mind that not all upper triangular matrices are in row equivalent form okay it's just an intuition that in most of the cases when you bring a matrix in upper triangular cases you're trying to reduce the matrix in row equivalent form but it's not a mandatory condition okay let's take these two examples now so this is on this is my first pivot entry but here wait what's this we have all the zeros this row has all entries as zero. This should have been here. This condition is not satisfied. So this matrix is not in row equivalent form. How about this one? This is on the right. This is on the right. This has zero entries here, but wait, this pivot is on the left hand side to so this. And also this pivot doesn't have a zero here. So it doesn't obey two conditions. And hence this matrix is also not in row equivalent form. Now, there are different ways to bring a matrix in a row equivalent form. Gauss Jordan elimination method is what we are going to be discussing. There are 16 other methods that I can personally think of in which I can solve a linear equation represented in the form of matrix to find the values of the variables. But not to overwhelm anybody at this point, I'm just discussing Gauss, Gauss elimination method and Gauss Jordan elimination method in this session. Okay, I just do not want to overwhelm you guys before even we are starting the basic concepts. So cause elimination method will bring our matrix in row equivalent form. Let's discuss that. 
So when solving for Gauss elimination, we can perform the following row operations. What are those? The first one is you can interchange any two rows. You can multiply a row by a non-zero constant. You can add a multiple of one row to another row. So these are the three operations allowed in case of Gauss elimination method. Just to do a quick recap, Gauss elimination method helps us to bring a matrix in a row equivalent form, which is REF. And we need to bring a matrix in a row equivalent form because that helps us to give us the value of the equations x y z or depending upon how many variables your equation has we are solving for those variables okay so let's get started with an equation so we have three equations here sorry i moved the ppt let's go back one step so this was our equation we have x minus 2y plus e. do i need no i don't have to speak the equation again so this is 1 minus 2, 1, 2, 1, minus 3, 4, minus 7, 1, 0, 5, minus 1. This is how we can represent a linear equation in the form of matrix, which we've already discussed. Now, my aim is to bring this matrix in a row equivalent form. So to bring the matrix in row equivalent form, the first thing that I have to do is, this is my pivot entries. All the entries below the pivot in a pivotal column has to be 0. So I need a 0 here and I need a 0 here, right? How do I do that? I can multiply this row right here with a 2 and then subtract it with my third row. So I'll get a zero here, correct? And then I want a zero here as well. So what do, what do I do? I can multiply the first row with the four and then subtract it from the third row and I'll get a zero even here. So let's go ahead and do that. So R2 is two times of R2 minus R3 and R3 is R3 times minus four times of R1. So I've gotten a zero here. This becomes nine, this becomes minus seven and this is 11. And then R3 is R3 minus 4 times of R1. So 4 minus 1 times 4 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0 here. Then minus 7 minus of minus 4. Uh, minus of 4 multiplied by minus 2 is a plus 8. So 8 minus 7 is just a single 1. And then we have 1 minus 4 which is a minus 3 in this case. So those are the entries that I have on R3. Now the first column is sorted. As you can see this is my pivot. And then all these entries are 0. The next step is, the next pivot will be this 9 and I need a 0 here, right? How can I get a 9? I can simply multiply my third row here with a 9 and then subtract it with my second row, correct? And then I will get a 0 even here. So let's go ahead and do that. Once we are done with that, we have 1 minus 2, 1, 0, 9, minus 7, 0, 0, minus 20. And these are the final values on the right hand side of the equation. Now let's check if this matrix is in row equivalent form real quick. So I have this as a pivot element. All the entries below the pivot in a pivotal column are zero. This condition is satisfied for the first row. Here, this is the pivot element. It's on the right hand side to the first pivot of the ith row and then the entries below the pivot in a pivotal column are zero. So this is also sorted. Next pivot is minus 20, which is on the right hand side again. And even this condition has been satisfied. So this matrix is in a row equivalent form. Perfect. Now, when it is in a row equivalent form, that means we are able to compute the values of all the variables which we were supposed to find. Now, this is the last variable. So this will be Z. This is the second variable. Second last here will be Y. This is the first variable. This will be X. And this will be X minus 2Y plus Z equals 0. 9Y minus 7 Z equals 11. And minus 20 Z equals minus 20. So I got Z here with the other two values. When I plug and play in the values, I get the value of Y equals 2 X equals 3. And so I have actually figured out the value of these linear equations by just solving the matrices, right? There are other methods in which you can solve linear equations by substitution, by putting in the values, by replacing orders, 26 other methods in linear algebra. But representing them in the form of matrices and then solving is another branch of linear algebra that is a quite handy tool down the line, okay? So that's that. Now let's move to the next method, which is row reduced equivalent form. Let us see when do we call a matrix, a matrix in row reduced equivalent form. So a matrix is in a row reduced equivalent form. If it's already in equivalent form, that's the first important condition, cool. The second condition is if the pivot of each non-zero row is one. Now here, this is different than row equivalent form. There, what we wanted, the pivot was supposed to be on the right-hand side. But in this case, we expect the pivot to be on the right-hand side, but the value of all the pivot entries also has to be a 1. This is the second important condition. The third condition being if every other entry in each pivot, pivotal column is 0. 
so every other entry has to be a zero below and above this is again where row reduced eclan form is different than eclan form just let's go back the previous slide real quick here so here this was the pivot the entry here was a zero but this entry wasn't a zero value which was okay in case of row eclan form but in row reduced eclan form we are expecting even the entries above the pivot in a pivotal column has to be a zero let's take an example and understand understand this okay so gauss elimination method we've already discussed helps us to bring a matrix in row eclan form then there's gauss jordan elimination method which will help us bring the matrix in row reduced eclan form again these are two methods in which we are reducing the matrix and then finding the solution of equations there are 14 more here in which 14 different other ways in which you can represent the linear equations in the form of a matrix and then find the value of their variables okay so let's see <clears throat> a little tired there <laughs> okay so to perform gauss jordan elimination you can perform the following operations what are those you can switch between the two rows you can multiply a row by any non-zero constant or you can add a scalar multiple of one row to any other row so these are the operations permitted let's take an example i have a matrix here so the first thing i need to do is the pivot element has to be a one so how do i do that i divide the first row with two so dividing this by two this becomes one this becomes three this becomes minus one now the first row is sorted all the elements below the pivot inner pivotal columns have to be zero so i want this to be zero what do i do i just add this with this i'll get a zero and then if i subtract this with this i'll get a zero correct let's go ahead and do that one three minus one one minus one zero six minus three is three minus four of minus minus one is minus four plus one which is minus three and then when i add this and this this becomes zero three plus four becomes seven eight plus minus one becomes eight sorry nine plus minus one becomes eight which is nine minus one now this is sorted what do i need now the next entry in the pivot column will be this on the right hand side because row eclan form says that but then row reduced eclan form also says that i want this pivot entry to be a one so i want this three to be changed to a one how do i do that i divide the whole row with the i divide this with three so when i divide the second row it becomes zero one minus one and this is zero seven eight so now we have the pivot entry on the right hand side to this now what do i want i need these two entries to be zero as well correct because all the pivot entries above and below in a pivotal column has to be zero is the condition for row reduced eclan form how can i do that i can actually multiply the second row with three and then subtract it from the first row and then i can also multiply the second row with seven and then subtract it from the third row to get me a zero here and here right so let's go ahead and do that so I have done this and I have gotten a zero here and here. So both the entries now are zero. After subtracting R1 with three times of R2 and R3 minus seven times of R2. Now the next thing is, this is the next pivot entry. These were my pivot here. This also has to be one. How do I do that? I can simply divide this by 15. So when I divide this by 15, I get a one here. Now the next thing is all the entries above the pivot in a pivotal column has to be zero. These two also have to be zeros. What can I do? I can add this row with this. I'll get a zero here and then I can multiply this with two and then subtract these entries too, right? Just keep in mind that though I'm performing these operations, the columns that are sorted for row reduced eclan forms are not getting distorted because of these changes that I'm performing on the matrix. So for instance, when I say I'm multiplying the third row with two, right? So let's multiply this zero multiplied by two. And then when you subtract it, it's still a zero. So nothing's changing here. And I don't want it to change because they're already sorted, right? I have a pivot, which is one, which is correct. I have elements below the pivot zero, which is correct. So I don't want to mess up these two columns anyways. So I'm trying to find correlations and you know multipliers in such a way that I don't mess up the already sorted columns that I've just done okay so just keep that in mind so 1 multiplied by 2 is 2 and then 2 minus 2 is a 0 and then so is 2 multiplied by 2 is 0 and then when you subtract 0 with 0 it's a 0 0 multiplied by 2 is a 0 and then when you subtract it with 1 it's still a 1 so this column sorted here 
one zero 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 one minus one. Now we can simply add the two. This becomes zero. This becomes still one. This still remains zero, and so we are sorted. This matrix is in row reduced Euclidean form. Why? Because we have the pivots as one. All the elements below the pivot in a pivotal column are zero, above and below. So it obeys Euclidean form, and it also obeys row reduced Euclidean form. So that's pretty much it for this session. I hope it made sense what exactly Gauss elimination method does and what exactly Gauss Jordan elimination method does. Just to summarize, Gauss elimination method brings a matrix in row Euclidean form, whereas Gauss Jordan elimination helps us to bring a matrix in row reduced Euclidean form. The only difference between the two forms is that in case of row reduced Euclidean form, your pivot entries are always one, and that entries above the pivot and below the pivot in a pivotal columns are zero. And why are we trying to bring the matrices in this form? Because our original aim is to find the solution of linear equations. But again, these are not just the only ways in which you can get the solution of linear equations when they are represented as a matrix. There are 14 more that I personally know of, and we will see their derivations and how do they fit in later down the line. But um, yeah, that's pretty much for this session. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can get in touch to you can get in touch with me through my website or you can email me and feel free to shoot any questions if you have and if something's not clear. Thank you.